come to this place beverage, we need this place beverage, I have to do what I'm told. I will do what I'm told. The answer is speaking about Mesora, which means tradition, a lot of tradition, and give some parameters as to how this developed, how it applies to you and me, what are its boundaries, when do we say that there are different options, and when do we say that something is outside the list of proper options. Let's start from the very beginning. Moshe King built Torah be Sinai and Besorah the Yeshua. Hence the word Besorah. Besorah the Yeshua. Moshe gave over tradition to Yeshua bin This tradition, from both sides, was given from one generation to another. Rambam lists to have many Chachmi HaMesora in his introduction to the Yad HaZoka. As a matter of fact, if you give me a Rambam. Rambam says that there were traditions. And there were Chachmi HaMesora. Which go from Moshe Rabbeinu to Rabbeinu Ravashi. The soul of Gedol and Chachmi is full of Atikim Torah Shabbat Peh, the Shegozru, Xeros, Vitkinu, Takonos, Vitigu, Vitagos, Vitposhtu, Vitirosu, Vitagonos, Vitagosu, 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 Vitagosu. He gives you the whole list. He rattles off 40 generations. From Ravashi to Moshe Rabbein. The whole list is here. This is what's called the Mesoru. <coughs> These are great people, the Dole Adoros. But it's important to understand that aside from the unique individual greatness of these 40 people, they represented a certain institution. And the institution was, for most of it, the Bezna Godel Sanhedrin. And that was the final word. We read about this in Parshat Shoftin. Kippon Chodova. La Mishpat, Ben Dov, Ben Dov, Ben Dov, Ben Dov, Ben Dov, Ben Dov, Ben all the areas of Allah, you know what the is? The Kamta Uli Salamok. You go to the highest court, the Sanhedrin. Rabbi writes in Hilchus Mamrim that at that point, there were very few opportunities to have long standing Machlokas. It could have been a Machlokas for a short period of time. Two people in some city of it disagree with the halacha. The Kamta of Elisa. As long as it takes to get from Beersheba to Veria, just give the famous cities that just didn't even then, to get to Yerushalayim, to fight it. <coughs> they got to Yerushalayim. Bez Nether either tells them on the spot what it is. If they're not sure, they deliberate. They make a majority vote, 36, 35 votes that happen, right? 71 people. That's it. That is the Psaq Aloha for that time. Now that Psaq Aloha did not extend forever. There's a vacancy in the Supreme Court and a different person is placed in the court and that person is chosen by the other members. And he changes the vote and the, the majority can change and Aloha changes. Yesterday was trade, today it's kosher. No contradiction. Yesterday the majority said this, the majority said that. Uh, you have meat left over in the freezer, you can't eat it anymore. <coughs> had yesterday. 100% was put to the half. Today not. The majority changed. I mean, it sounds wild to us, but that's that said. That's all we had a Sanhedrin, with majority rule. Even after the Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin ceased to exist a significant amount of time before the redaction of the Gemara. There were still opportunities for the Chachamim to come together to establish rules which apply to all of Israel. The most famous one is, of course, Chasima Satava. That's why I mean Ravashi, the last of the, of the 40, Ravashi number 40. What was unique about that, Mr. Like Rambam? All, or nearly all, of Chachmi Israel got together. And they have the ability 
to pass in Shalas, and no one can disagree with her. Whatever is compassionate in the Gemara, us, Sabut, the Chaya, Potter, none of us can disagree. We may have high IQs, we now have computer searches, that's nothing else. You can't go against the Gemara. Impossible. However, right, it's the same Rambam, and this is very important, this is exactly the point of, of challenge. What happened after Abashi? Oi, this Pazu Yisrael, Bechol Arotzos, Pizu Yeser. The Jews were dispersed. The Yigil and Tzavos, the Yimar Chokim. They went to all different islands and faraway corners of the world. And there were many wars going on, and you couldn't travel. And even Talmud Torah was lessened. It used to come in thousands and ten thousands. In our Yisraelim bubble, no more. Every time a couple of people learning, that's it. Every bed since the time of the end of the Gemara can only rule for its own constituents. However, point to them, that's what they, they have to listen to, but no one else. I live in Be'er Sheva, and it's also best in Tveria, but they say it does not affect me whatsoever. It affects people in Tveria. My best in Be'er Sheva affects me in people who live in Be'er Sheva. Come on, follow me. This is what the Rabbi is saying. Since Chasim HaSatalmud, no Bezid, no Rav, no matter how good he is, how smart, brilliant, can say something which is binding completely on all of Chal Yisrael. It hasn't existed since then. Clear so far? Now question. Does that mean that as long as you're not arguing with the Gemara, any guy can say whatever he wants, do whatever he wants, as long as not going against the Gemara? What do you think, yes or no? <coughs> Who thinks yes? Hope not. Well, some people think that way. It's not against the Gemara, do whatever I want. The fact that all the Chachmi Yisrael said differently, it doesn't, that doesn't deter me, and the Rambam says that. It's, that's not binding on anybody. No. First of all, he says it. What one rub says not bonding on, on another rub's town. But every person, Rabbi Osai, is opposed to fulfill the mandate of Mishnah Novus. I say the Chorav. Everyone should have a rub and he follows that rub. Now, of course, it's easier said than done. It's not so easy to have a rub. In today's world, I think Rabbi Osai is often inaccessible. It's going to through. Mediators doesn't always work so well. But the best you really have to have a row, because you can't pass the things yourself. What do you mean? Look at the internet. Hey, there's a little time. Look at the internet. Look 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 the internet. I asked my dear friend, if you have something that bothers you, you go on the internet. Where's the doctor? No, I don't know. Like the internet passes for me what I have, what I have. Mad, you're crazy. You call up Nefesh. You imagine the guy is chest pain. Oh, look on the internet. Shabby Rafa. What do you mean? It's all there. Everything's there. You can look. It's all there. Every term is there. Everything. So, too. Everything's on the internet. All the other shyness and shubbis and everything's there. You have to have a rope. You have to have a soul. I was introduced to the top of the Rav Salavetchik as one of the Rav. I don't fancy myself to be in the list of his devoted and, and, and outstanding Kabina. I've learned with him for so many, so many years. And it are spending their, their lives viewing his Torah on a daily basis. I don't consider myself in that category at all. Although, I certainly did learn it this year. But Five years, the two summers in Boston, which is a plus, and it's also very important. <coughs> you can't, how can we not say it? That's why I got to know the Kaddish, the Russia Tversky, Zechat Sadek, the Racha, who was by Mitzvah at the time. It's painful to talk about right now. Our Rebbe would constantly refer to the concept of the soul. Got to pick one word to be his, you know, his theme is the soul. Of course, you understand he had a particularly glorious family of the soul. 
father, his grandfather, so the Dolly is from going back to the generation of course, the Tziv, the Chaim Balajana, and this is, it has a very, very special uh, family. But he said that every person, no matter what family he comes from, has to have a Mesorah. And he banged it home to us all the time, it has to be a Mesorah. A Mesorah. And a Mesorah means that there are Chachim and Mesorah in every generation. <coughs> and these Chachim and Mesorah, all people disagree with each other. And there's no resolution. Because ever since the Gemara was redacted, not every argument can be resolved completely. I mean, from the Ram. Most people that have to pass in the shadow, they don't open the Ram. Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Shulchan Aruch came a number of centuries after the Ram. Joseph Kair on his part, the Ram Bok, Ashkenazim on his part. If you look in Rabbi Yosef Kara's introduction, it's called Mace Yosef, towards the end, he, he raises the question, how can I write a book, of, uh, I don't know, a quick book, how, there's so many different opinions <coughs> out there, those who preceded it. He answers, we're going to rely on a majority of the pillars, the Amudim, Shekol Beis Yisrael Nishan Aleya. That the entire house of Israel relies on these and those pillars. Who are they? The Rift, the Rambam and the Rush. He spells it out. As a rule, it says the majority within that court of three she created. They have these dream teams and <laughs> other areas of the world which I don't want to get involved in. <laughs> dream teams. It is dream teams. It's the dream people, people that never saw each other. It's a dream team. The Rift, the Rambam and the Rush, and he follows the majority. You know, <laughs> he didn't make it up. In his view, call base is throw additional air. So remarkably, lo bashamayimi, Hashem does not make decisions as it were. He gave the Torah to people, to human beings. Calls by me at 71, their, their word was final. Even after that, till the Chasim HaSatavon, the word is final. Since then, nothing is final. Base Yisrael, Decide who the Gedolim are going to be. Rabbi Yosef Kar picked me. The Rambam writes, excuse me, Rabbi Yosef Kar, you, you picked the court which has two Sfardim, one Ashkenazi. Very nice for you. But uh, we have different customs. And he rattled off a whole bunch of other people. There are Tysus and the Mordechai. And, the, and he passed the Ashkenazi Psach. And, and, and they sit right next to each other on the same page in Shulon Aruch. You know that. Different Messoras. Spider and follow theirs, Ashton and follow theirs. That's the reality. So, what if a person will say, I'm not going to follow either? It doesn't matter to do the Shulchan Aruch said such and such. The Chabar of all agree, I have a different sheet there. It's like we show them that argue with both the Chabar and Rabbah. I want to follow them. There's always a Das Yachan of many, many, not every, many, many things. But a minority opinion somewhere or other? Of all the minority opinion. This is not to be done. Less, less, there was a Mesorah from the Dole Yisrael, the generation has them, to follow an opinion opposed to the Chav That can happen. The Shach did it, you're there many times. The Vilna Gaul did it many times. Many of their rulings were never accepted. Except for the Mechaber Rabbah, not the Vilna Gaon. Sometimes the Vilna Gaon was accepted. Mishnah Brewer has a lot to say about this. But you just you and I can't just go take off. Well, we'll decide what we want. Not against the Gemara. The Rabbah said I want to do this to the Gemara. So do whatever I want. Can't do that. Can't do that. That's number one. Number two. The Rabbah is equally insistent about this. We have to believe that the Messiah that we have is correct and the practitioners of the Messorah are seeking the truth. There can be more than one truth. We have to believe that the Chachmei Messorah are seeking the truth to the best of their ability. 
and I'm not hiding behind their authority to propagate views which they themselves know are not true. Whatever supposed agenda is attributed to them. As a matter of fact, the Rambam writes in Hilchos Teshuva that there are some people that unfortunately <coughs> They're not really full members of the Masora community. Some of them are even, unfortunately, can even lose the chelik and all of our bar. Very serious. Someone denies the Masora. <coughs> no, the explanations of the Torah, Torah Shabbat Peh, because things are, have changed. Things have changed. It's a very, very serious problem. Now, of course, halachas do change. A, there are innovations of, of Kachmi Yisrael, like Hanukkah's coming up not all the time. B, very often we say the facts change. Facts change, the halacha remains the same, but the practice is different. Again, this is given over to Chachmi HaMasorah to determine whether these changes are really of significance. <coughs> the Rambam says that one who is, in his terms, HaKofa Perusha. Torah Shabbat I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I'll put my phone there here between my eyes. We, we don't know anybody like that. It's just be some kind of a karoid shul or something. Is it something? Yeah, it's still like this. It's a little like this. They already, of course, many generations say that's wrapped close to the Shadishma. But, 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 yeah. Then he has a phrase. Ba'amat kish magi deho. What does that mean? Those two words. Ba'makhish magidel. Rabbi explained thinks it means that they deny the authority of the Magide Hamasora. But they say either they're incompetent, they're intellectually dishonest, or some of the other things that are thrown at us in some of the modernists these days. Rob was very upset about these friends which existed during his day. I only picked up Steve more recently, unfortunately. Fine. You know, we would even know if there are no coincidences in life. Just yesterday, literally, in the middle of time in our yeshiva, someone gave me a draft of a proposal, a certain group, let's mass group, doesn't matter. But among the things that you have to believe in to be part of this group, of course, but I've seen I, okay? But now that this question, the, 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 the paragraph for ourselves, it's only one paragraph of eight, I want to read it. We are heirs to and participants in a millennia old halachic process which is founded upon an unbroken chain of tradition of Sinai and it continues until today. And which incorporates the Bible, the Talmud, Jewish law codes, responsible literature, and other authoritative works. That is a bracket. Why don't I don't know why? This process greatly emphasizes tradition and precedent, while also sanctioning the adaptation and application of Jewish law to new circumstances and evolving realities. Halacha includes internal mechanisms which uniquely guide its responsible development by halakhic authorities and which create and thereby sanction multiple views on many issues. In the course of the principle of Eilu v'Eilu Nira Lukach and Yimchayim, we affirm that each such view determined by an acknowledged halakhic authority is <coughs> respect and consideration. What's, 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 what's this? What are they saying over here? Two things. One, 
they can be more than one legitimate opinion in Allah. Two, they can be illegitimate opinions in Allah. The first deserves our respect, even if we don't follow it. The second deserves to be outed. This is not legitimate. This is not something which we do. You'll find a risha, you'll find the source, you'll find you can find things, you know, as I'll say, you can be the retirees, <laughs> hasheretz, for men test the rochem. Find 49 ways to take a sheretz, just start to make a Torah. Mental gymnastics. <coughs> it's not within the Misora. Sorry, it's not accepted. Now, I really want to open the floor to questions, but that's the main point of this presentation. But I suspect, but not speak to Rabbi Bina. Maybe I'm all wrong, but I just have my funny suspicions. I mean, being as concerned that some things that have existed in our community recently, which he probably considers to be outside the pale of the Messiah. I know I've been it quite well. I'll tell you one story we have. What story? A small little thing. A small little thing. I was with him. It was a wedding. I mean, Vito was asked to read it to him. Many, many times. Looks at the Ksuba. And the Ksuba is the name of the Khost of Kala, their father's names, and their mother's names. <coughs> but Abina refused to read the Ksuba. He couldn't move. He said, you just, just do read it, just, won't, just read the father's names. No, nope. I will not in one inch. What's wrong? What, what's the big deal? What, what's the big deal? <laughs> what the big deal is? It's against the Messiah. My Rebbe said, based on the Pasuk, the Shmachos of the Beis Avosa, we are known by our, the names of our fathers. That's what we're called up to the Torah. That's how many other things are done that fashion. One of them is a Tzuma, it's, it's a legal document. He would, I was a good bunch. And my guess is that he's bothered by these kinds of things that you probably heard from more than I do. But let me tell you, what he, you know, why maybe he asked me to speak about it. Because they don't come from my town, <coughs> Riverdale. No, <coughs> no one's going to a pit <laughs> A couple of things that uh, are going on there which I think uh, probably bothered him. Uh, this last year, was a, was a sponsor uh, permitting, permitting a young lady to don, to fill it, one of the local schools, and you know I can find I can write a chiv also to it's all out, no problem. It's just, it's a, it's a giving. So it's here, so it's there, but it hasn't been done in our community for 500 years at least. It's a break with tradition. Articles have been written about it. Our chef the Shlita wrote about it. Rav Tversky Shalita, the mayor, wrote about it. I'm going to speak about it. I'm write about it. Speak about it. It's a great tradition. I believe it's against the law. I don't know. I have an expansive view of what halacha is. Yeah, Allah is not just black letter law. If you look at Shemana, it says a woman should be waiting for another both and the other. It's time for my filling. It's more than that. It's a breakless tradition. And these breaks, <coughs> even if they're really fairly small, have a habit of snowballing. You know, Chef the Wolf quotes the fact that when the reform movement started, what was their big first break? Of, seems to be of zero consequence. And he said they cut out the Yakub Purka that we say the Shabbos to the morning. Yes, no, that's, but that was the way it was. It was a sitter. No one ever touched the sitter. And they cut out the, the pack. What do you mean? They got the Baba. Baba, no, is it Baba? I what is this? Say that. What did this do another? 
you know, you're not going to believe it, right? Okay? It's now 30 years. Next month is 30 years since five of the rabbis of the yeshiva signed a piece of paper uh, opposing what was then known as women's <coughs> prayer groups. Which meant women didn't want to come to shul with the men. They want to have their own thing. They had their own thing, and they, they, of course, the centerpiece of it was Kriya Satara by the women, for the women, of the women, and there were major problems raised by it. And um, it was a debate in Riverdale, of course, which triggered this letter. And I was the young member of the of the, the those who signed it. And the major point of that letter was against the Messiah. Recorded that Rav Salavich and Rav Moshe Feinstein, those are the two Rav that we look to in our time and place. We both opposed. <coughs> you know, in many communities today, this innovation of 30 years ago or more is passe. Why should women get an aliyah when the only women in the room? Do better than that. We have partnership in young. <coughs> what does that mean? <coughs> the woman gets an aliyah and the men's shul. Tamo. Yes, 
theory, any Jew can argue in any sock given after Hasim as a Talmud. But Amazon is a theory, not a practice. In practice, there's a hierarchy, there's a Messorah. <coughs> and yes, yes. My Rebbe would often say that there's always Chidush in Limer HaTorah. He was one of the most amazing B'chadshim Rebbe. He was so creative, so original. But all based on tradition. <coughs> <coughs> I want to say one Torah Torah and then I'll open the floor questions. <coughs> mentioned before that we're uh, the next young to this is Hanukkah. If you look at the Medish Tanchuma, Tanchuma says in Pashas Daso that a person shouldn't say, I'm not going to keep Hanukkah. That's true, the Torah is not the Torah. I don't say that, says the Medish you know, Yaakov Avinu did something very bold. He placed a fry before Menashe, and out of the birth door. Very bold, right? <laughs> Original. And the Kodesh Baruch Hu endorsed it. But the Kodesh was not so. On the seventh day, <coughs> the Nasi from Ephraim went to Korban, and the eighth day, Menashe. So God in heaven, the gave with Moshe of the Torah, was endorsing a decision of Yaakov Avinu. So if Yaakov Avinu's words are so powerful that Hashem endorses them, Chach me Yisrael, they say, like Chanukah Kenos, you better do it. That's the Medish Tanakhuma Parshas. Parshas Nos. A little strange, what's the connection between this particular example and the teachers? I suggest as follows. There's a healthy skepticism not wishing to act upon new laws and ovations of, of anybody. <coughs> One of the cardinal principles is that Torah Lord Tebuch Lev is Torah never changing. But here's, here's the distinction. If a member of the Chachme HaMesora, whose primary responsibility is to maintain and preserve traditions, decides that the circumstances require a bold act, somewhat different than what might be expected, then you have to listen. Yaakov Avinu was such a person. He did his best, the shame of Osaya, Rabbi Yitzchak. That was exactly the problem he gave to those two grandchildren. He was there to preserve the tradition of his father and his grandfather. But, because of the specifics of a prime of Anashi, he felt the other reverse the birth order. Give it a promise. So too, the Chachmei of the Sora who ordained the laws of Hanukkah were dedicated primarily to preserving tradition. Once in a while, the amazing event which is Hanukkah transpires, we need to do something new. But if someone is only interested in doing something new for its own sake, change for the sake of change, has to be shalom. It's supposed to be rejected outside the Messiah. <coughs> Think about it for a minute. This is why it's so fundamental and so misunderstood. The Prime of Menashe represent different ideas. I assume you know from Hashem a little bit. Ephraim actually says at the beginning of Parshish Vayechi, learned all day. His grandfather Yaakov. Menashe, what did Menashe do? Anyone remember what he did in Rashi says in the case? He's a diplomat, court interpreter. His father Yosef's court. Different things. What was learning all the time? What was about the worldly matters? Placing Ephraim before Menashe was Yaakov's way of saying, that heavenly matters take priority over worldly matters. And when he was challenged by Yosef, he said, Yodati bin Yodati. Ashi Vayichi. Gabu Yalom be Gabu Yindo. Ulam, Ochi ba Katon, Yidali Menu be Zaro Yamelo Agoy. Yes, Menashe will be great, and Prime will be great. What's that? The Rashi tells us. It's a descendants. Menashe's descendant was Gido. Same as Shoph. And Friar said it was Yeshua. Yeshua would be greater than Gidon. What does that mean? 
a simple level. It means Ephraim was a person of this world, he was a diplomatic politician, and Gidda was a man of this world as well. He was a general, a military man. Ephraim learned all the time, and his descendant, Yoshua, although he was quite a military man as well, but he was primarily known as Moshe Kibbutz Torah, Torah Yoshua. He was the, the first of the Chachmi Mesorah to get the Torah from Moshe Rabbeinu from Hashem. So therefore, consider to be great. But listen carefully. What was the greatness of Gino? Gino's greatness was he was an original general. He was stuck, vastly outnumbered. What did he do? We don't know what he did. He took lanterns and pictures and chauffeurs. You remember they called him here the Davidka. They had a lot of noise and light, but all they had to do ran away. Because it says, the original strategy. Wow, this is great. For both sides, what would happen if this battle was written up in the London School of Strategic Studies? And there was another fight between the Giron and the, and the Plishnev. They tried the same strategy again. What would happen? What would happen? They killed. If you fight, if you fight the last war, the disaster. That's a little bit of the Yom Kippur, the last war, those who know that what happened. This represents that in worldly matters, there are always new things, and we encourage new, it has to be new. And it's not only in the military sphere, we just celebrated this last week, I think, the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, which meant basically the end of the, of the Communist Empire, the old the Cold War. Bring that back from 30 years ago. Bring it to the world today, you know, back to then. Wow, where is the Cold War? Where is the Berlin Wall? Everything's changed around. There's so many different changes in the politics and military strategy. Why, why, the, 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 the guns are different, the planes are different. Why, why are we limiting ourselves to politics and, the, and military? The world of technology. You, know, you guys all have email. Bring it back from 30 What's email? In other words, it's Facebook, it was me, but the uh, internet, and, and, and everything's new. Everything's new. They didn't have these things uh, 30 years ago. They didn't have it. You're going to try to use a computer. I remember the first computer, I think, was in the 50s. They used to look at the socks, I think. It was back. The socks. It worked. Hey, chip. No, the whole world changed. And we need, the, we need the most recent military strategy and then polit political and, and economic. For both sides, how many people in this room plan to enter the same field of, of Parnassa when they go into it to, to earn a living as their great grandfather 100 years ago? Probably was if he came from Eastern Europe. Probably was a great great grandfather by now. Maybe it was a tailor or a cobbler or yeah, maybe all the dairy, grocery store. <coughs> no, no one do it. The world changed. And it changed within our profession. Law changed, medicine changed, psychology, everything's changing. The world changing. This world is all about change. You have to be ahead of the curve to succeed in any field. <coughs> and that's why there are people who fail to distinguish, as I'm about to, and want change for the sake of change in the world of halacha as well. A fundamental error. Yoshua, Yoshua ben Nun. <coughs> Why was he chosen to be the leader? Coming against the Simon Shabbat. You know why? All he wanted to do was to change nothing, to reflect the glory of his mentor and master. Why is it from a master? The name Moshe Kipnei Chama, Upnei Yoshua. Ancestor of Yeshua, Kipnei Levana. Doesn't just mean that Moshe was greater than Yeshua. It means that Yeshua reflected the glory of Moshe Rabbeinu. But the moon reflects the sun. And that's why he was chosen. Chazal said to him and those who were more brilliant than he. It matter. He was chosen because he is a perfect successor to one of them I want to maintain and preserve. The rabbis in Germany in the 19th century, when there were so many changes, they used to sign names to all the rabbis. Shomer Mishmeres HaKodesh. The major was preserving 
the preserve of holiness in this city. Once that someone in my community ran to a German family, why did you change this? Change, change all the things. Why are you so stubborn? The person asked me. I said, show me a missionary as I call it. Town of Riverdale. I'm trying my best. I'm not, I'm not the rabbit of the whole town. Far from it. It's a little tiny sliver. But in my little sliver, I'm trying, trying to fulfill this mandate that was given to us by the great of, of 150 years ago. So they were doing. They also weren't so successful. Our first came with 11 families to Frankfurt. We pulled it up a little bit more, but yeah. <coughs> Ephraim is before Menashe. Ephraim represents Torah and preserving and reflecting the glory of old. Menashe represents the worldly matters always new. And I'll add you one more Kiddush before I open the floor. This lies and adheres in the very names of Ephraim and Menashe. What Menashe means, you mean in the case, Nashani Elohim is called Amalur is called Vesavi. I forget everything. I moved away from everything. That's what Menashe represents in this world. Ephraim, Ki Ephraim Elohim be Eretz Andi. For the word pre, apple. The apple today is the same as the apple in Ghanaian. Almost. Beautiful. But basically the same apple. Not there to be in talk. Some changes, yes. That's why the Bender says we keep Hanukkah because Yaakov Avinu was so intent on preserving tradition. He decided to switch around with Ephraim and Hashem. We have to do it. The Shem did it. Chachmi Yisrael was so intent on preserving tradition, decided to add Hanukkah. You have to do it. But someone who doesn't understand this about the Messiah wants change for the sake of change. That's beyond the pale. I believe that this is the message that was asked to give by the Rosh Hashim. I didn't check with him in advance. If I'm wrong, or if the hands will let me know. Maybe I was wrong. But I think so. Uh, knowing him a little bit. And uh, <laughs> I now open the floor for questions. But first, about <coughs> my presentation. And if there's time afterwards, you can have anything you want. So, first question about the presentation itself. Yes, sir. Very good question. I feel blessed here. With many, many rebay. You can have a sailor around multiples. When I have a lot of questions in the Shabbos, I go to this rabbi. He's an expert in the Shabbos. I go to have uh, questions about the Shkodesh, I go to this rabbi. Uh, yep. Questions and kashas are a different rabbi. Obviously, it's better if one is one, one for everything. It doesn't have to be that way. They're all part of the Mesorah tradition. The more rabbi you have in this, in many ways, the better you are. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen, you have you have to have a rebbe that you stick with. You know, people have rebbe's who they stick with for 40 years, and those who don't stick so long. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good rebbe. Don't let go. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that the uh, incidents such as like the high school that let a woman down to phone is a direct result of uh, the conservative community kind of mixing with the orthodox and like? Well, I, I don't want to talk about that happening, but I understand what I read. That the particular woman who asked for the permission, which was granted, uh, went to what they call the Solomon Schechter School, which is conservative. It could be they even belong to a family of conservative clergy. I, I, the details I don't know. It clearly came from there. I have, I, have no, I, have no, I have no tightness to them. They're conservative. No more of the mixing, like. like well, the, the problem is that the principal of the school, who was a, a Talmud of mine, uh, decided that in order to make this woman happy, and to keep her in the fold, he's going to allow this to happen in his school. I wouldn't. I don't agree with him. I think that you have to draw lines and say, "Listen, lady, you want to put on this villain? What's the problem? Put it on at home." The Marano, the fiddle going to the basement. What do you Why must the school give its imprimatur to such kind? That's a <coughs> problem. Follow me? Yeah. Yes. What do you do if? If the Masora you choose goes against, you know, what your father says, is Masora Trump keep it up anyway? Here's the story. Um, most Hamidim, although they have fathers who are wonderful, wonderful Jews in so many ways, they're not members of the of the rabbinate, and certainly not members of the of the post and certainly not the Khakni Hamasora. So instead of saying that you follow the tradition of your parents as such, <laughs> you have to find out if that tradition is in fact rooted in customs of their origin or their parents or grandparents' origin, 
even though perhaps most people aren't following them, but they have a good source, then you're entitled to follow that tradition, even if it goes against what other people are doing. But if not, then unfortunately it's just something which is sort of, uh, I guess, which is sort of uh, uh, original and not in, in accordance with the traditions that we've been taught by our various communities, then you, you, know, you don't want to you don't want to start up with your parents. You should never tell them to do something wrong. Of course, you know how to do that. But then when there's, whenever you're on your own, you should try to you know, adhere to the tradition you've been taught by the Rebbeim, who are part of the traditions uh, of Sinai to this very Yes? Next to the question. So let me give you a good example of we had before Yaakov Avinu change tradition, and he put the crime of Omanash. Chachmei HaMesor and Tavim Chanaga used to do holiday. Let's give a, a recent example. An example which is 100 years old. That's very recent, Jewish history. The Holy Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim. The Chavetz Chaim. He's a deep for us, right? Deep posting. He's an approach to a woman. A woman. And her name was Sarah Shneer. And he asked about her face, Yaakov. So, before going to that specific question, your Chavaz Chaim wrote works in an abstract halacha. Before going into the details, I'm saying, well, the Likute halachas are the receptors of the Rift and Rai. One of them is the receptors. So, and he writes there that although the Gemara and Sotah says you should not be teaching Torah to women at all, not even Torah Shabbat Sab, and certainly not Torah Shabbat Pen. Today, things have changed. It used to be, a woman would go from, forgive me for saying it in an old-fashioned way, she'd go from the home of her mother to the home of her husband at a young age. And she was not subject to the influence of the street. And the street itself wasn't so bad. Chavaz Chaim saw, at the beginning of the 20th century, certainly World War I time, that everything fell apart with tremendous dislocation. The families were split up and youngsters left their homes and the culture was bohemian. It was a disaster. You have to teach the women Torah. Yes, he didn't say Gemara. Whatever he said was much more than I've been taught in previous generations. So Shneri came to him and he wrote a letter of approval. Very, very strong. My view is that the Chabad Chaim in this context did not abrogate any script halach. The words that the Rambam uses to tell us, as in Shulchan Aruch, the woman should not learn how to learn the Torah. Sibu Chachamim. If you do a search in your computer, Sibu Chachamim, you'll find it in the Rambam 15 times. And all of them, to my knowledge, are not absolute halachas. See, the Chavad comes you should do it this way. I believe the Chavad Chaim was not invoking what some people said he did. Ace, last, the Shem, and You can go against the explicit halacha because the, the times are so difficult. But rather, I believe, he said simply that the Eitzah of Chavad, of the time of the Chavad, is not a good Eitzah anymore. We're, lose, we're hemorrhaging. We're losing the young women by the, by the thousands. They're all going off the derech. Or we turn. So you have to, you have to, have, you have to teach the Torah, and even to establish schools. That's my understanding. Now the Sarah Shneer story is very important. You know, there were those who have advocated many, many innovations in women's ritual behavior. We mentioned some of them already: getting, making their own binyanim and having their own aliyas <coughs> and. and Father's opinion, and many others. I don't know if time. We're in Tefillin, all right, we just mentioned a few. And they say, we're following Sarah Shneer. She was a revolutionary. So we're following her. We're, the, we're carrying her flag. It's arguable that Sarah Shneer is the most influential person in Jewish history of the 20th century. The century that saw the Rav HaShulchan, the Chazanish, and the Mishnabur, and Rav Moshe, and the Rav. But they were all Rabbanah. She made a revolution in women's education, which not for that, Chas <laughs> the whole world would fall apart. 
Very nice to have to be the home if they can't get married. What's going to happen? Come extinct. You have to know the history. She came from a family of bells and seed. And so she had this idea. And her brother said, You can't do it, sir. And go to the rabbi. Bells the rabbi. And I'm like, See, whatever the rabbi says goes. They walk into the rabbi, and he's saying, The rabbi is going to say, You're out of your mind. It's like a school for girls. Bells. Bells are very. Uh, but instead of saying that, the rabbi said two words. Mazel Lubra. Those two words change history. Because Sarah Schneer, with all the work she put in with these plans, it was how many years she thought about it, how many months she actually put it, plans and paper in her, was going to put the whole thing away. The rabbi says, no, it's not. That's Missouri. That's Missouri. The rabbi says, no, it's not. And the Bells are ever is very, very into tradition. But he saw it with his clairvoyance that if you don't do this, it'd be a disaster. It bells. And then she went to the Gary Rebbe. Same response. Bracha. The Chabad Chaim. And they said, no, the three of them, she would have shelved it. Table, put it away. Make it to some other generation, some other person. Who, who can make a change. Who's willing to forego the change, even though they think it's a great thing, at the request of Dole Atom. That's why it's important to understand what tradition is all about. Does that answer your question? Say your question one more time. Uh, we do not have the type of support for women learning Gemara that we have across the Jewish community that we had for the establishment of the Beisak. By the way, the Beisak movement teaches Torah Shabbat and they also teach Rashi, which is Torah Shabbat Pen. They learn Pasha Mishpata, which they learn all the Beisakos. It's, it's a cut and paste of the Kalim of the Mazim. Shomrim, Shor, it's not easy, I'm just saying, it's all right. I think there's no way so whatsoever. I think that was it is in Torah Shabbat. I have to say that Satmar is the only group that don't even learn Torah Shabbat. Sat. Their base, it's what do they call it? They're the center of energy. They're still, they're, they're back, they're, they haven't budged. That schools, oh, they're the school, the biggest schools in the world. The biggest schools. But they only turn to center of energy. They don't know the Chomsh. Okay, it's Chomsh of Arach. And that's one group. We respect them, we respect their their opinion. So while I said that in my view there's no prohibition against learning Gemara, I think it's ill advised. Now, my Rebbe, 70 years ago, 80 years ago, I don't know, some, some years ago back, established a school and they had they, they some Gemara. Boys, girls, it was an impossible situation. The total of, my Rebbe came to Boston, they said there were six from families before retirement age in all of Boston. The retirees learned Gemara in Europe. They were the Shabbos, the Shani Rav. There were six, and it was, there were six families, six men under retirement who, who were from Shabbos, and three became my brothers. Anyway, so it did what it at the time. The fear is that now the whole world has gotten into this egalitarianism that women studying Gemara is simply what we call Mitoism. And it's not coming from the right place. I will never say that it's us, sir, because I told you before it's not, it's not us. But if you ask me, the Zibu Chachamim, which is found in the, in the Ramba, and perhaps 70 years ago, at least in Boston, it changed. In my view, it changed back. Because of all the pushes that have happened, it's all one big envelope. Right? They're pushing one big envelope of egalitarianism. Right? The, the women's chila, the father's minyanim, the, the spilling, and then there's some, I, I can rattle off a number of names for female clergy. So if you know some, I can three, the three that live in Riverdale, three different titles, and, and, and there's another one. And, 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 all part of the same push. Push. And you know what? It goes back to what we said before. Since these changes are existing in the outside world, <coughs> the glass ceiling is being pushed higher and higher up to doctors and lawyers and everyone, and, you know, all the high officials of the US government, 
maybe the next president. I'm not like getting uh, close with him. You know, so all these glass ceilings are being pushed out. So why not then the world of Allah? That's what's coming from. It's explicit. And I told you, lo, that's in the world, and this is in the world of Allah. That's a fry and this is a That's why I feel that this is, that's where it's coming from. Uh, I will tell you where I stand. My daughter's brought Hashem to And my daughters all studied here in the Holy City. And they all studied in a, in a school called Mikhala. Have you heard of it? The Mikhala is attacked from two sides. Beis Yaakov say, Beis Yaakov, it's true. One of my daughters went to Beis Yaakov, and I got a call from the principal, whose name was Soloveitchik, and I couldn't uh, disregard him. And her high-pitched soft voice said that she was upset, and I heard that my daughter might be going to, you know, my dad never said, okay, but what's, what's wrong with the Mikhala? I just asked the question. She responded beautifully, it's not a Beis Yaakov. She's right. Right, no, 100% right, it's not. So that's what she's opposed. If for you, Beis Yaakov is one of the equi of you can't budge from it. That's 100% right. You feel that way? Whatever the history of that whole story is, another time. On the other hand, the class being attacked as backward, reactionary, fundamentalist, but schools where the girls are walking out with swagging when they take a bar, it's the same as you guys do. You know, when they take a bar. <laughs> I met Rabbi last time. Years ago, I went to his house. He embraced me. He said to me, Ah, you and I are both being attacked from both sides. You know, we're somehow we're, uh, we are kindred spirits. Uh, Kupa to me is a hero. He started a, an important institution, which, yes, was a break with tradition, no question about it. But once again, it's guided by Hafim and Sarah. That's why I feel that's an appropriate education. All these other things which beyond that to me, and never gets prohibited, I don't think it's leading us to a good place. I think I've been worn out in the last 15 years. What's happened? It's a slippery slope is very slippery and very steep. Who knows where it's going to end? I'm very traditional in these matters. <coughs> you know, even in sociological matters, now it's given that a woman has a career and, and, and fast track, etc., etc., and the family suffers. Either the family suffers, either doesn't get married, or if she gets married, she decides not to have children right away, or if she has children right away, they're in the care of others, which means not as far from ideal. With Rabbi Kellerman, now we're still in West Hempstead over here. Okay, so we probably got somebody. There was still a rabbi in Brookline, Mass. 1979, I think it was written. It's about the term which Rabbi Shalom calls women's liberation. It's feminist, was called in the late 70s. And he, Rabbi is very strong. He not that way. People who want to rebel against the Torah, they are obligated to wear children and citizens, etc. It's fear. Because they're rebelling against what that Kaddish Baruch who wants them to talk about exactly learning from these things, learning Torah all the time, so much as the same true of them. But that Kaddish Baruch who felt that the most important thing for a Jewish woman is to have children and to bring them up. Even though they want to have that more Torah and more, more mitzvahs and less time spent bringing up children, this is important. Rebelling and causing the kind of a career. I don't want to say every single case, that's for sure. And I know many wonder women who juggle everything. Juggle everything. They, they're doctors, they get married, they have children. They're overachievers, they're able to do everything. I'm not going to be opposed to that. In my family, we've tried our best to adhere to the old tradition. It's certainly about the financial sacrifice. It's true also involves what we call a status sacrifice. The homemaker, you know, picking up kids. So what is that? What is that? Doctor, lawyer, uh, 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 somebody. 
You know, I want to say one more drive talk. I'm going to open up for more questions. Okay? I'll say one more drive talk and I'll have more questions. The Gemara has an accepted promise that you're dying of an album. The Gemara has two members, one after the other. The Gemara says like this. In the world to come, the reward for women is greater than the reward for men. I cry foul. Reverse discrimination. Why should the woman's reward be greater than mine? Does it happen to be born a male? Not fair. This is an important Gemara. Confirms what my Rebbe said about Rabbi Shira and Natsem Shiva. We do not believe the women are second class citizens, Chas To so the contrary, you know, if you're in a company, you want to know who is the top person of the company, you know, who gets the highest salary. That's what it is. Title CEO or president or whatever it can be. The highest salary. Women get highest salaries. Torah Simpson, Xerxes Kosser from Talmud Torah, and and Zman Gurama. They should have more time to take care of their families. And that's why it's, it's explicit, it's unfortunate that the, the, the people who are trying to undermine our traditions are attributing things which don't exist. It was a rabbi some years back said, on the internet, enough! He's not saying Shalom and Sani Isha anymore. No more. Using some kind of a put down of a class of shop. Look at the toss after the bronze. Tells you why. Because he has more mitzvahs than she has. It's purely a technical statement. And why does she say she has something good something? He says, very beautifully, one of my shop. He's saying, I'm, ha, honey, I have more mitzvahs than you. And she says, back then, you know why? Because I can have kids, you can't. She has something good something. That's well, the reason I'm exempt, because I have a higher, greater role. Exactly what she said. Question. Question two. The Gemara is saying that. Next piece. Noshin b'mai kozachyon. How the woman married all of Abba. Says the Gemara, because they bring their sons to school, and they bring, they wait up for their husbands to come back from the base medrash. I want to tell you that I was not willing to give up on, on some of this. Um, My kids were young. I drove the car. We used to have a station wagon before the new safety things, but a big station wagon. <coughs> and we, I'd, bring, I'd pick up so many kids in the morning, take them to their schools, and boys on the way to Shiva. And there was two kids next to me, at least, and four or five kids in the back seat, and five, ten in the back, back, we used to pull them. And I'd press the button, and they'd come screaming out, all the ladies are watching. Wow. This is my old album. Bring kids to Yeshiva. Why don't I give it over to women? But I have a bigger cash. What about Shabbos and Kash Taz and Shmuel? What did Dasha and Michael Zachin? And they wait up for the husbands to come to the Shmuel and they bring the kids to call. What happened to the Shabbos? What's going on over here? My answer is one question answers the other question. They say right now, who is Shabbos and the rest of the Chabot? The reason what the most questioning is not why women get all the Chabot, of course they get the same as men for Shabbos and Kash Taz Why do they get more? They're asking my Kasha. Why do they get more than men? Is the answer. The first will say a little bit of Hashkafa that unfortunately human beings aren't perfect and sometimes they have punishments in this world so they should have a much better time in the next world, the world to come. You'll find us in the bars and problems, the Marashal, you'll find us in the Ramban. This is a cardinal principle in Hashkafa. The same mystery the Gemara is telling us is that the more the role which has more honor, sometimes called covet, sometimes called covet hamadumen, illusory honor, in this world is the role of the man. Whatever he's doing, he makes a lot of money, he becomes a Talmud Chacham, whatever he's doing, the boy is more out there. So he gets more quote unquote covet. The woman who has a more, how should we say it, role behind the lines, take, raise, bury the children, bring up the children, the most important thing that she do for the next generation, she does not so much quote covered in this world. That's what it means. She 
gets more reward in the next world because you lack a little bit of this world. It evens out. We get a little more here, we get a little more there. It evens out. We have different roles. And blurring these roles, and to my mind, is a very dangerous thing when really it goes against our traditions. Um, more, more questions? Yes? Um, talking about like breaking the ceilings, if um, a gay couple, um, you don't know what they're doing <coughs> necessarily behind the lines, we try to like become the members of an Orthodox school. Oxymoron. <laughs> I'll go much further than that. You know what I think I can do? I'm a real reaction. I once said in Shabbat Shub in Russia, it was back, oh, it was back, I would say, almost 20 years ago. Top of the Shubh Russia was Bezos of Mishnah. Bezos of Mishnah. I know Kipper. He was about a Bezos. He had to, had to be married. Ramosha writes in the Shubh. The very essence of marriage is that the woman enters her husband's home. Paskal Chumash. If base he shall not know. Or we shall call me Beso. Shuba Ramash, I had to make it up. I was so upset by some of the happenings from then, I said, you know what? That's how we that's how we understand America. She enters his home. And she enters his home. Since we have a thing in our American country called surnames or last names, she adopts his last name. I said, no couple. No real 100% couple, kosher mahajim and mahajim with every shabbos and kosher shabbos mishpoch, will not be allowed to be found on the membership list as Chana Cohen and Ruben Lee. What allowed? Somebody walked out in protest. I, but I do my, view myself as a liberal. I do. But I will allow them to have the following listing, which has a couple of like my shul. Levy, so we have the, we have the last name. And then Rube. And then for her first name, Kaneko. Kanala. It's hard to go to go. Gay couple, I'm the Kharshme. It's an oxymoron. Gay couple, Rahman al Islam. They're doing terrible, terrible things. You have to be so careful. Okay. I'm not throwing rocks at anybody, has to show them. We have to have compassion for everybody 100% and what is appropriate. But, you know, the state of New York just changed the marriage licenses two years ago when they changed the law. It always said husband's name, wife's name. Now it says spouse number one, spouse number two. Now, the recent protest crosses it out, right? Husband and wife. Luck with that true. In a few years, they'll send it back. That's what I want to what our state has Yeah, I'm sorry. Obviously, like, I agree with everything you said. You don't have to, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, are you supposed to just build them on the bus and say you can't come to shul? Or, like, even if they don't try to become members, they just like show up together. Like, are you, is the rabbi that, like going to kick them out? No, I'm not sure the lot of the same time sort of the machines. <laughs> <laughs> This is not a joke. I received a serious question, not this question. But a, 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 a transgender. Someone changed genders. And now she insists on sitting in the men's section. She made herself into a man. I, 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 I kid you not. A real shall I receive. She insists on sitting in the men's section. I said, that can't be. But it's in the women's section. And she wants to dress as a man. I said, she should still sit in the women's section. But the women may not allow it. They said, well, we don't want someone who looks like a man in our section. We're not taking off the pants, but we don't want to like say in our section. And the man can say, we don't want to honor our section either. She looks like a man. I was a very liberal rabbi that day. I said, if you have no alternative, this is the rabbi from the Bulos where they hit the lands. If you have no alternative, you have a shul, like many shuls out of town, big buildings with small populations. If that's your case, in a shas at you don't want to exclude it completely, let the women sit at the women's side, and the men will sit at the front of the men's section, and she'll sit in the back seat of the, of the men's section with her, with her male clothes. Because she's 
so far away, behind them. So even a real, if a woman sat there with the, the post of a mate on the shots of the I don't know what happened the other day. That, that, these are real shilas. And the family unit is breaking up. The guy I had asked was asked a real shilas. Real. Can a school accept a child of a gay, of a same-sex couple? That was phrased. The question is said, he doubts. She doubts that a boy's school will get such a request. But the boy's school that she represents, it's unlikely that a quote gay couple, two men, would be interested in sending a boy to a school which is a, you know, a, a, a single sex school. She doubts it. When it comes to girls, it's already here. That means they call a lesbian couple. And they have, one of them has a, has a baby. They bring up this baby, the baby's a girl, and they want to send that, they want to send that child to a girl's school. What do you know? So I said no. We have a family to consider. We have to recognize families as such. I say it, it's something to talk about, but it's all part of the of the new world that we live in. New technology, new morality, <coughs> new everything. And I said at the beginning, we want to give, give me the old term religion. A Friday, Yeshua. Historically Yeshua. Give me give me back give me back to Hasina. That's what we believe. And it was you know, it's a famous story, it really happened, you know, when Yaakov Kamenetz about the plane. And uh, all of his tarantulas are all over him, waiting on hand and foot. And he's sitting next to some scientist. And he also has tarantulas on the way. He says, Rabbi, I don't understand you. Your tarantulas are waiting on your hand and foot, and my tarantulas don't sit there busy watching the TV. No one even comes over to say hello to me. Why? We have told him. We believe in Torah Messina. It all started there. Because he read us a Doris. So my grandchildren understand that their grandfather is greater than they are. So they're just trying to help many which way. You believe in evolution. You started from the monkeys. Every generation gets further from the monkeys. It's more advanced. So why should your grandchildren take care of you? Think about that. Any more questions? Yes, sir. So in Shira, I'm talking about myself, we're up to uh, give, give them a little bit of So I was wondering what the Rev thought about the balance between um, the Ian and um, uh, the Ian and the uh, Why did you start? Zacchaeus. Start in the beginning of the year. Cheshvan or El? El. <laughs> That's really you. <laughs> I don't, I'm here to, to preach to Rebbe's had to teach their tongue. No, not, not the Rebbe, I'm saying after Yeshiva, let's say. Like just the, the balance between. Uh, I, you know, I, 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 I think going so slowly is really not, uh, not maximizing the use of your tongue. Uh, you have to go a little faster. There's a Torah out there, but you learn. Not opposed to Ian, it's good. But you have to run a balance. You have one Ian Seder, one Ian Seder, a little bit Yeah? I was going to talk more about uh, how. Of the time is going to change the way it's going to be. The big rabbit that I'm really like, full heart of it says, you're all the top of the world. I wouldn't oppose it anymore. Someone that they would come on the level of the top of the time, it is right now. See, I've got a lot of Yosh in the air. He says, look, I know my place. I bow my head. It's nuts. Bow my head. You have to lay in place. You don't have to do it. You wouldn't say have to do it. So it's okay to do it. I would draw my criticism. Yes, sir. The Rub was talking about proper shidduch environments before. Um, said Hask or YU Connects. Do you think it's a problem to have so many girls on the YU campus? Yes. <laughs> 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 See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. My shear, they're only men. <laughs> I spend it to only men. Sleeps by day, it's almost all men. I have a whole lot of night. I don't know what's there, I'm not there at night. So I, I don't know. Uh, I, 
I, I do believe in preserving Yeshiva atmosphere, and I'm not happy if it's uh, compromised. I understand there are various pushes and pulls in our illustrious Muslim Yeshiva, and uh, they say that in our country, it is what it is. Yeah? Um, how does the Rav suggest balancing learning and studying at their Yeshiva? Study means secular studies? Yeah. I'm a big believer in secular studies, but especially those who want to utilize it for either a profession, whatever profession you, you, uh, you start to into, or even for well-roundedness. You know, I believe you should learn how to read and write and speak the English language. I know I'm not so good at it myself, but you should learn better than me. You should, it's very important. It's a very important skill. Unfortunately, I, I sometimes see Mark Pest papers. Okay. Some English, it's really bad. People were not taught, you know, that there's a new, and now I don't try not to use either, but there's a whole new word, world out there. No capital, no periods, no commas, and so we no Russian papers. It's a little lack of that. It happened on the email. I'm traditionalist. But yeah, whatever else you study, I think if you study, you should study right. College? What would be a healthy balance, though? Don't hear you. What would be a healthy balance in terms of... Look, I, a person's in yeshiva, he has to learn, and he has to go to college. You have to find the right balance. Now, maybe you should be encouraged to take fewer credits, take more credits in the summertime, or maybe stay an extra year, not to be overwhelmed with your college studies. It depends you know, how good a student you are and what kind of program you're taking. But if you're overwhelmed with your English studies and not able to learn, Mara with a rabbi, this got the experience. It's not, not a good idea. Yes? Who do you consider Chachma Yisrael? Chachma Yisrael? I'm sorry? Who do you consider Chachma Yisrael? I mean, who's alive today? They're just in general. Yeah. Many of them are the ones who either wrote from that are used in subsequent generations. It's Chachma Yisrael. He was in the Mashiach house. Beyond. That's just Chachma Yisrael. They're Chachma Yisrael. Some of them wrote nothing. But they brought up Tamidim. You know, Chatham Sofer, who was through the Chatham Sofer, had already read Nelson Adam. Never wrote a word, wrote nothing. He was through the Chatham Sofer. He brought up, he raised the top of uh, Moshe Sofer, Chatham Sofer. It was a Chatham Sofer. You have to be only with a written writing. Yeah, so it's a certain level. You want to start chipping away and, you know, where, who would it, that's not nice. So, uh, it gives you some name beyond that. Yes? How does the Rav uh, think one should approach being so many in the workplace? Other years, we have been asked to speak about that. This year, this. I don't know how that works. I'll have those minutes anyway, so I'll be saying about the bell if I finish this question. Um, the word Shomer Nagir is not found in Tanakh, Talmud, Shomanaruch. It's a new term. And I think it's a, we should, you know, since people are using it, I'm also going to use it myself as well. Um, there are two kinds of Nagir. Shalchibar for Shaloba Shalchib. Rabbi Shit a couple of shivas about it. Shaloba Shalchiba's mutter. The example he gives is riding the subways of New York and Russia. Been on it? Pushed around all the sardines. Men the bump of the women. Matter it! He is Shalchiba, affection contact, it's greater. And then the question is where to draw the line. So Rabbi has a shiva by handshake. Probably mean in terms of any of those. But Moshe writes in his chuba that if someone wrote, I saw a great man shake the hand of a woman, he you goes, know, Cause show this book, I'll say. It's hard to rely upon. Why is it hard to rely upon? It's a very simple one. Because this great man who you saw, for him, undoubtedly was Shalom and never he was non affectionate. But for you, you don't know what it's going to be. But Moshe himself, I have eight of Someone who was actually there, a woman stuck out a hand for a bush, he shook a hand. My younger of Salabesh, I was in the room, a woman shook out, shook out her, her hand, he gave her what we used to call that the dead fish. She, she just took it and put it right down. A <laughs> reptile. <laughs> So when I was asked this question by Tamidim and Yeshiva, 
What are they doing? They hit job interviews, and the woman sticks out a hand. I said, okay, so give the dead fish. Maybe, give the dead fish, you're a whip, they'll let it hire you. Okay, give the bone crusher. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, get a brisk handshake. <coughs> Very quick. I was, as you, some of you may know, I'm part of a uh, summer camp. Many students have been there too. And summer camp, well, absolutely show me the gear. That's the word they use, show me the gear, show me the gear. But I'm not sure now, but many years ago, they allowed handshakes. So, boys, we go to Chavez and they would shake hands. I saw some of those handshakes. Let me tell you. I'm not going to do it so. Okay, handshakes which are problematic. My time is up. I wish you all wrong about Slava. Thank you very much.